Um, yeah, I was thinking about Dynasty Warriors. Um, and how, I don't know, I never got into it, ever. It's like, I kind of got, I didn't entirely get into it, but there was that gameplay where, like, your character, you just beat mobs until you, like, reach the boss at the end. And there yeah. are some games that kind of, like, spun off from that kind of gameplay, which honestly isn't bad, Yeah. you know? The, so, I, like, get the, the appeal of it. It's just, I don't like going up against mobs that just kind of stand there and take a punishment. Yeah. And I've noticed that in a lot of the Dynasty Warriors or uh, Samurai or any other Warriors game, it seems like the archers are the most aggressive ones. Which is both annoying and also kind of funny. Like ev everyone who's within melee range just kind of stands there, but the ones with archers will just not stop shooting you. Um, and the bosses are also the next one. They're they're not taking anything lightly. Those are fun. Yeah, Boss fights are fun. They're, they're very like attack program. Yeah. You know, I do this move and then wait, but it's not really turn based. But yeah, yeah, and that's sort of been the thing. That and also the hitboxes are really weird. It feels like uh, playing. It feels like I am playing as some. Dark Souls 2 boss with a strange hitbox that shouldn't really be what I have, but I have it anyways. Where like I, my weapon is hitting about three or four feet away from where I'm swinging it. Like like I'm using the force, but with the spear. Yeah. And then like, in some cases, like there was there's one move that Link has in Hyrule Warriors where he shield bash charges, and. He, he hits the first few guys, I'm like, okay, and then, like, he gets a wall of moblins up from hitting them with the shields that, frankly, he's not hitting any of them with. I remember I literally thought that game was cool, because I was like, oh, it's Dynasty Warriors with, like, all four of the characters. Yeah. You can use like, you use... I just thought that was cool, but it really was cool. So, like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at that. My cousin's watching uh, Gary's mod videos. Um, but yeah, so that said, I feel like all the Warriors games, like the combat looks really cool, and I would like to see them in a, a more like personalized, maybe corridor style or action adventure style, because they kind of. There, there is kind of like a a meta for each character, but that aside, and also aside from like some of the hitboxes being like a little over the top, I think the gameplay looks cool. It just doesn't look challenging. And also, I don't know if I would trust them with AI either when it comes to, outside of like boss battles, when it comes to mobs, because they're... When you change the difficulty from like normal to hard, it doesn't change the difficulty, it just changes the damage they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, I am interested in enough to be like, if I knew how to program and knew how to change maybe the, the hitboxes and then knew how to extract that program and, and those characters, I would love to see them in a different game. Like, I think there's so much potential in the Warriors franchise, but I also just don't see it happening, because it's such a... The, the, the method that they have of selling their game and the, the formula that they've got going for them has worked forever, and I don't see it changing, because I don't... I wouldn't see any reason to change my gameplay, like, for formula of making those games if they were so successful either. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I kinda I have like a love hate relationship relationship with Dynasty Warriors and the like. Um and yet I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what the Persona Royale was gonna look like. Because I don't yeah. know if the hitboxes are gonna be just as egregious or not. It might be less so because there's guns and knives involved, or like pistols. Yeah, like, that, that, that kind of 
kind of gameplay you have to open for like more opportunities. And, yeah. Like, like mom really like, has on to do like, like, yeah. Yeah. And then I was thinking of like bayonet is kind of funny because like. Uh, okay, I was gonna say something about DMC and like the, the Devil May Cry series. Generally, what ends up happening is that it's it's not too complex, but it is complex enough that instead of memorizing everything that you've gotten in terms of combos, you memorize the ones that are easiest to remember and do like the best. You memorize like one or two good combos, and then that's it's kind of your life until you get a new weapon. Yeah. That's what I've noticed. Especially, especially with the early ones. Um, yeah. Devil May Cry, uh, DMC5, well, not actual DMC5, DMC, the yeah. one that was like a to all the games. Yeah. That was like, definitely on the, when you got a new weapon, you really got to like mix and mash your combos. Like, yeah. I mean, they all had that, but... But yeah, it felt more natural to switch between yeah, weapons mid-combo. Right? Exactly. Okay. And with, um... With five, with DMC five, it was just cool in that aspect because you had like three different characters, like they were all yeah. different and they all had different kind of play styles. I mean, Dante still had Dante, but he still had like some new, some new mechanics with some old feels. Yeah, you know, some virtual fans, people who really liked the virtual, could get back to the Devil May Cry Special Three Edition if you actually played back that yeah. had Virgil in it, and then. Um, Crow, V. V was a cool, completely different character that was just so different and so out there. I really yeah. liked it. Was, it was really awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then, but that also got me thinking about Bayonetta, and the one person I know who played it is like... It's kind of funny, because what he ended up doing, the way he plays Bayonetta is he hits the Y button exclusively, when he had all guns, because <clears throat> the the kicking did more damage than just shooting with your pistols on your, your like hands. Until yeah. he got a sword, and then he would use the X button exclusively, because that's what was it, the sword's tied to the hand button. Like you, X is your handgun, and then Y is your foot gun. But when you switch your handguns with something else, then whatever that is becomes the X button. And it would be funny sometimes when he would die and then he'd be like training and he would see a combo that he hadn't used in a while and be like, oh yeah, I forgot I had that. And then he would use that for a little, a little bit until he was like, alright, I'm going back to the basics of just all one button and dodging. Yeah. And that's kind of interesting because I don't know if I've actually seen anyone play those type of games that way before. Um, but I can totally see it being... It's kind of interesting that hasn't happened before. It's kind of interesting I've never seen anyone play that kind of game like that. Um, I don't know. Except for Xenoverse. People play Xenoverse like that, and it's kind of funny. And they hate it the for that reason. Well, with that kind of... I'm thinking of God of War, and like, the most recent God of War. Oh yeah. Because you had, like, your ice thing that you could throw. Yeah. You had, like, different kind of, like, mix and match a little bit, but it was still very dodge and know when you can attack. Yeah. And you did have a mix combos and like that that game is kind of like it's it's a little bit like uh, Avengers in a way in terms of like how it is the combat is very good but it's also RPG and I I love the combat even though it's Dark Souls made better technically yeah even, including the camera perspective but it's still a good combat but then I've also seen it, like, if you don't do all the side quests, then you're underleveled, and now, like, this guy who's killed titans and gods is now getting rocked by plant zombies. And that's a little... <laughs> it's, it's a little odd, to say the least. And then... I remember someone did a, like, a review of it, like, Gaming Sims, and... I don't know if they hate the game, so I don't know how much I can take their word for it, but the one point they did make that I think is totally valid is like, they were like, I'm getting tired of this Dark Souls style combat. Everyone thinks it's the best when it really isn't. I can think of plenty of others like DMC or the original God of War yeah. trilogy. And I was like, oh God, it's yeah. true, sadly. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. It's the truth though. Like, yeah. The original, even the original God of War, it has like your, you could roll. You could like, double jump. 
you could double jump, <laughs> you could still roll out into a combo, like... Yeah. And, and now I'm thinking about it, I was like, oh man, it's true. The, the story is really good, though, okay? I will give it yeah, credit. Yeah, exactly. The story is amazing, but yeah. they felt that Dark Souls was so yeah. reality-based. Yeah, it, it's like they wanted it to be really grounded and then forgot that he's a mythological <laughs> god killer. Oh, you think we want a hard game? No, we want a good game. A good game is a hard game. No, no <laughs> yeah. it's not. We want difficulty, but we... <laughs> like, I'll be honest, that game probably would have been totally fine if it wasn't RPG-based, too. Like... If, it, if the combat was the same, but it wasn't RPG, I probably wouldn't give it so much hate, honestly. And even even with the hate that I have, I still think it's good. But now that I'm thinking about the original trilogy, I'm like, oh man, it could have been better. They, they even yeah. nerfed... Because you do get the Chaos Blades, but they nerfed it now. It's... It basically plays like the Axe, but with two blades instead of the Axe. And I'm like, oh no, I just, that that was kind of the eye-opener, I was like, wait, he's not doing any God of War things. That's That was the eye-opening experience of like, oh no. Yeah, but then again, I, I took in consideration it was God of War, and it's supposed to be like a different, because it's more of on the North, North aspect. Yeah. So they did try to incorporate, like, the story with, you know, he's older and developed, you know, this is his son now, you, yeah. know, you know, we really don't know what happened in between him killing, you know, Zeus and him having a child, yeah. you know, just know that, like, those gods are gone and clearly he's, he's in Norse mythology now. You know you what, know? There, there might also be a thing to be said about, like, maybe because he killed all of the Greek gods, his powers have diminished. They never say anything yeah. like that, but that's that's actually kind of believable in a way. They don't, you know, but they try to kind of reincorporate that aspect a little by giving you the chains of Olympus. Like, yeah. You know, and his son kind of tells, he does have a moment where, like, he tells his son, like, hey, I, uh, I, 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 I've done some things, son. <laughs> you know, like, killing your grandfather. <laughs> we have those. This is why we have to go to family events. Yeah. There's not much family left for a family event, kid. Yeah. That said, I still think it does honestly deserve its, like, awards that it won. Um... I just wanted to touch lightly on God of War, because it just I just thought of it all of a sudden. Yeah, no, you're good. That's still, like, God of War, um, 3, still one of the best God of War, and on my PlayStation account, I have 100%. I'm proud of that. Yeah. I'm still very upset that on God of War, I have, like, 91% of achievements, and it's only because, like, I have all the achievements, I killed the Valkyries, I did all the hard shit, I just, I didn't kill all the, I didn't do all of the finding shit. Yeah, so yeah. I and yeah. Yeah. There's like some other games in here that I've got that I wanted to talk about that I don't even think you care about, like Pokemon. Do you care about Pokemon? Um, anything after the first three generations doesn't really make any sense. That's Fair. Just the inflation of, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the first three or four generations were the ones that mattered. For me? Um, anything <laughs> after that, people are just making fun and... I yeah, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I I only kind of really thought about Pokemon once they started entering 3D space, and even then, yeah. even then, I was never interested in playing it because it's very grindy and turn based. And like, I can appreciate that in like a regular RPG, even though it is a regular RPG. I somehow appreciate it less because it somehow feels more grindy than other RPGs. I don't know if that's fair, but that's what it feels like. That makes sense, that's fair. And then, I've only really gotten into Pokemon Rando, and even then I can't bring myself to watch most of the randomizers that are out there because the PokeTubers are so loud and, like, I want them to be a bit more chill, honestly. <laughs> Unless, of course, something happens and they're playing a Nuzlocke, and then I'm like, okay, you know, that's fair, you can, you can be angry. People get angry when they play games, it's totally fine. But, yeah, that's fair. But then, like, getting excited over 
literally nothing, like literally just starting the, the recording is a little insane sometimes. I'm like, God, chill. Jesus, you haven't done anything yet. <laughs> well, being human is hard, man. I'm yeah. And I, I don't know if it's really, you know, it, it's probably just they're trying to, they've set up a brand of a sort, you know, like that's, that's a, what you call it, a, uh, an act, I guess. You know, it's probably not how they are in the real world, you know what I mean? But they have to do it now, they're just kind of stuck in that loop. Yeah. And I can respect that. Um, but I also see some PokeTubers that don't do that, and then I see people who aren't PokeTubers who also don't do that, but they also can't get into PokeTubing because of all the... the Basically, you're kind of... There's so much around you that's going to be like that. So, it's kind of funny. I never got into Pokemon, and then recently I've gotten into it but not really, still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then I was looking at Kingdom Hearts and Lost Kingdoms. Uh, Kingdom Hearts is a pretty cool game, but it is funny that I've noticed that everyone I watch who plays it is skipping all of the cutscenes. Um, because, you know why? Because I, I play Kingdom Hearts 3, and it's one of those things where, like, Kingdom Hearts is made for all the people who played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, like the people who waited 10 years for this game to make. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like Toy Story or all those games, like all that stuff. Yeah. You know, there are people that, us, you know, we waited like 10 years for you guys to make this game. Yeah. And when it finally came out, it's not that it was bad, you know, it's just that we know that you wouldn't make it for us. You know, mm, yeah. you made it, you made it for like, you, you knew that Disney was Disney and you could new generation it. And like, the, some of the worlds, like in Kingdom Hearts 3 and some of the places, like, you need, there are so many other worlds, so many other things you could have replaced with under some of that. And like, yeah. you did, like, some of the main characters you did, like, another singing, that's another big thing, everybody skips the singing, because we don't want to hear you sing yeah. the song the movies, and well, we just don't want to do that, plus you're yeah. not singing the actual song, and you only added this because you thought that, you know, you thought that the 10 year old was playing this, not, this is... not, you know, yeah. not, you know what I mean, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, not all the people who really went to go see Toy Story 3 who waited for, like, 10 years to see that shit. Not yeah, yeah. incredible two people, you know what I mean? Like, that's what it feels like. Not yeah. that Kingdom Hearts was a good game or anything. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, it, it was like, it is, Kingdom, they knew, Disney knew, it doesn't matter what they put out, we were gonna buy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, you know what's funny? I wasn't even thinking about Kingdom Hearts 3. I was thinking about Kingdom Hearts 2, and even people who watch, who play those skip the cutscenes, and I'm pretty sure it's because they've already seen it a hundred times before. Probably not even then. You probably, after the first couple times, you know what the story is. You don't need to watch it again. And also, let's be honest, the, the characters are very robotic in their delivery. Yeah. And it's kind of true with like yeah. some of the Final Fantasy games, too, is that they sound robotic. And I think it's because the voice actors are asked to sound like the Japanese actors and yeah. they're trying to the Japanese actors are trying to sound like you know serious and very like you know cultural based but in our case we don't get a localization difference instead we get what they're trying to attempt to like make it sound like the original and it just ends up sounding robotic because we can't pull that off on that concept I don't, I, I don't want to take that away from just video games. I feel like that's a lot of things because in America, we don't culturize a lot of things, yeah. especially in media aspects like video games, TV, movies. Yeah. You know, we, we had a full-on six-fledged fight on whether or not mermaids can be black or not. <laughs> that's right. Like, you remember, you remember yeah, that? Disney was doing that. I forgot all about it. <laughs> yeah. Like Shows how important it was, huh? Yeah. That was a, that was a real thing, you know, I, and yeah, they even God. up, like, the old cartoon of, like, you know, Ariel's black friend they used to kick it with, like, hello, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not to mention, also, side comment, like, can we get the real story of the Little Mermaid, you know, the yeah. mentioned little creature that actually, like, cut her legs off because she wanted to be a token, you know, that story? I didn't, no. <laughs> but yeah, I... Oh, yeah. Now that you brought up Kingdom Hearts 3, though, I've, it's got me re remembering something. I, when Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, and I was like, I played a little bit of it. I watched someone. 
play it mostly, so I didn't really play it that much. But um, I I never really thought about getting a Kingdom Hearts three until Disney bought Star Wars and Marvel. And then I was like, you know, that would be really sick in Kingdom Hearts. I would love to see Darth Vader and or uh, exactly. the Avengers. Exactly, and it didn't even happen. Yeah, it didn't happen. There were so many things. The Frozen made it. I'm like, I'm not, and I'm not trying to talk shit on Frozen. Yeah. Why? What do you mean? I never got a keyblade that looks like a lightsaber. You were supposed to survive me with that. Like, Wait, yeah, they they have a villain in in the second game that has two lightsabers. Yeah, like I, I totally forgot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they could have done that, you know. Uh, like, and he could have take, he could have been there to be like, hey. Would you like to join our organization in Darth Vader? Be like, no, we have an empire. What are you talking about? Yeah, you know, I mean, like, I mean, can I get like, like where was Professor Xavier like crafting me a freaking like here's some mutant blood? Like, yeah. You know, like, come on, like, you know, you should. I should oh yeah, no, I, that's what the, I had an idea for like, the the heartless invading the Marvel universe. For example, uh, heartless Sentinels. Yeah, like, come on, like, that would have been pretty good. There's so many things they could have done. Or, or, uh, or, like, the organization steals Venom from Eddie Brock, and now they have a Heartless Venom symbiote that's changing hosts between yeah. different Heartless. Until eventually yeah. it gets back to Eddie, and then you have to fight him, because he's still a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. That was, that was another concept I had for Marvel Universe. Um, but they could have done that, you know? Yeah. Instead of just like, oh, Elsa was popular, and Moana was popular, yeah. and Eric was popular, and we still gotta have Nightmare Before Christmas world or else everybody's gonna cry, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I feel like they just knew, they could have just been like, here's your game after 10 years, and we were just gonna be like, yeah, and we played it, yeah. like three hours later, the game was over, and we were like, what the fuck? Ooh, three hours is short for that series, wow. <laughs> I don't even think it was three hours. That, that is the speed run for the Kingdom Hearts 2. A lot of the people complained that the game was very short for like yeah. a 10 year list, you know? Yeah, that is kind of crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I will say that the Toy Story and the Monsters Inc. is actually pretty cool. It's just, there's not a whole lot of bosses. Makes me think of honestly because we brought up Toy Story. Well, I brought up Toy Story. That wasn't you. I did that. But that got me thinking about. Uh, do you remember Toy Story 2, the video game for PlayStation and Nintendo 64? Um. Yes. Actually, was it two or one that I, I think it was two and you had to it, go. It was two because you had to you had to leave the house. The house was the first level, and then somewhere along yeah. the way, you made it to an elevator where you fought Zorg. And that was like, one of my favorite boss yeah. fight because I realized you could bounce the balls back with the spin attack. And it was great. I mean, you didn't always bounce back to where he was; it just bounced back to the direction it came from. So pretty soon, you had like eight just balls bouncing off the top of the elevator until it hit one of you. It just became a Mario Party game at that point. It was a pretty good boss fight, in my opinion. <laughs> Now we're playing tennis, but there's no rules. That was a good nostalgia. Yeah. Uh, Alright, I've actually gone over most of the things on this list. So we're Lost Kingdom, I guess. I, I brought it up, but I didn't say anything about it. Um, I don't think I know much about it. Yeah, it, it was a very... It's a From Software game that came out on GameCube. Um, and it's also not very well known. There's definitely like a community that 
I don't even get involved in, but it exists. And I don't know if the community itself get, it gets itself involved with itself. That's how, like, small this game is. It's like so few people played it. But there's definitely a following of the sort. And, uh, there's like... It's a good game. It's basically... Um, everyone who's played it describes it as Yu-Gi-Oh! but in real time. That's not really Yu-Gi-Oh! either. So what it is is you have... Creatures are invading... Ah, what is that noise in the background? So there's a... Uh oh. So there's monsters invading your kingdom. And then uh, you get cards that summon monsters and you can capture monsters and so on. It's a pretty fun game. Um, there's some guy at the end to plant it all, but he's just a puppet for a god in the end. It's a really fun game. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's one of my favorite games to play, and it's probably the only game that I would recommend from GameCube era that people wouldn't be like, why did you play this game? Like, that's one of those games I think other people would really enjoy that I played. As opposed to Dragon Ball Z Sagas, or... You know how Final Fantasy XIII has got, like, mixed reviews from people? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every Final Fantasy game is different, but still. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I'll talk to you tomorrow, it's getting late, and my little brother wants to play, so... You're good, man. Thanks yeah. for reaching out. Thanks for, you know, remembering my existence. Yeah, and man. Guess, you know, like, shit, man. Like I said, call me, man. You're good. Yeah, thanks for answering. It's been fun. No problem, man. All right. All right, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you later. Probably tomorrow, if I'm being honest. All right, man. Don't know if I have any other topics to bring up, honestly, but I'll see if I can come up with something. Yeah, man, you're good. All right. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Bye, man.